Um, Wendy Kopp started dreaming about how to make the educational system in this country stronger and better um, when she was a senior at Princeton and she actually wrote the whole plan in her thesis. And we all know now, because it's been in existence for, for quite some time, Teach for America really changed the education system. I, that's not an, under, an overstatement at all about the importance of this program, which encourages graduates of universities, colleges in this country to give back uh, by volunteering to go to some of the neediest schools uh, in this country and teach. Uh, the TEACH core now is just so large. Uh, the, the alumni and the graduates, and now Wendy's expanded it with uh, her team internationally in a program that's modeling this same idea called Teach for All. Uh, the success, Wendy, I know still, I heard you say to a young man who said, I'm one of your teacher cores, and you said, yeah, and I hear you're awesome. Uh, and I think what we all want to say to Wendy is how awesome she is. Um, so this model that you've perfected now of, of bringing these kids, inspiring these young people to give back in these schools, how is it working to export this as a model outside this country? Um, well, Pat, thank you for that extremely generous introduction. I, I might almost say, I, I think I would say too generous, um, because we feel that we have not yet perfected, per se. Um, but we are, we are working to build an ultimately unstoppable movement of our country's future leaders um, to take on what we believe is our country's greatest social injustice, just the fact that still where you're born does determine your educational um, outcomes. Uh, and, and, and just quickly, I think on what we've come to believe here in the US before, and, and then a little bit about, about what we're seeing, and, and we're not expanding per se, but we're supporting social entrepreneurs in, in a whole host of other countries from India to Lebanon to Chile to Germany to Australia who are pioneering the development of this model in, in their own countries. Um, you know, this year, 35,000 graduating seniors and recent grads competed to teach in, in our country's urban and rural schools. And I think if someone had said, you know, 20 years ago when I was a senior at Princeton that one day 15% of the senior class would apply to Teach for America, you know, wanting to teach in our urban and rural schools, we would just not believe it. And, and yet that is where we are today with 11% of our Ivy League seniors and, and even greater percentages of the, of the diverse students at, at our Ivy League schools. And, and, and you know, we recruited 500 schools and, and have tremendous folks coming from a great diversity of schools. And, and these are people who are initially saying, you know, I want to commit two years to, to give back. Um, but they, they are joining a, a, a lifelong movement and, and are doing this because um, because basically in response to core members who have come before who are out on these campuses saying, let me tell you what I learned in my two years. And, and this is the heart of what I think fuels what we're doing here. They share their experience as a teacher um, where they say teach fourth grade and meet classes of kids who come into their rooms at the first grade level. And you, know, you see the statistics like that, but when you actually meet these great kids and you realize that, wait, we are in America, the land that aspires to be a place of equal opportunity, and yet that's the extent of the disparity. And then they pour their heart and souls in and, and work harder than, than any teacher should be expected to work. Um, and at the end of the year, they realize their kids have progressed more in that year than, than you would ever expect kids to progress. You know, Two years of progress in a year's time, some of them will get their kids up to grade level by the end of the year. And once they've done that, they realize, wait, so this problem didn't have to exist. Because if, if you know, they've seen their kids who came in so far behind excelling on an absolute scale. And, and I think that's, that's the crux of what is fueling our sense of urgency here, is just this recognition that you know, as, as significant as our educational disparities are, it doesn't have to be that way, that this is a solvable problem. And, um, they go on as a result of that, some of them to stay in the classroom, but others to go on and say, we got to affect fundamental changes. Um, you know, at the, 
different levels of our school systems. We need to affect policy changes. We need to do things that will both alleviate some of the challenges that we expect our schools to take care of by improving the quality of social services and health services and economies in urban and rural areas. Um, but we also just need to, to build the infrastructure of our schools and school systems so that so that even, you know, so that they do meet the extra needs that kids who face all the challenges of poverty bring into their classroom. So, I mean, that, that's, that's the big idea into Pat's earlier comment. I mean, I think we're beginning to see the power of not only what they do during their two years, but, but to see them seeding a true systemic uh, movement for change. And, and I think it's that vision um, that is inspiring these social entrepreneurs who I've recently met just over the last couple of years um, who just believe so passionately uh, that enlisting the most promising future leaders in their countries um, to fight this problem in their countries has the potential to be just a fundamental force for, for, for change.